So what we're trying to do is to create a spreadsheet that has dates along the top and so we can mark attendance for each student. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a spreadsheet and get this set up. But what if later I need more dates? So let's take a look. I'm gonna start with sheets.google.com and I'm gonna create a new spreadsheet. Let that load, of course. Okay, and I'm gonna just start typing in student names. And I'll put some last names. All right, so this right here is first name and last name. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put two dates. So I'm gonna do 10-1 and 10-2. I don't know why I'm going backwards. All you need is really to have two dates and then you wanna continue it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these two dates and you see that I have in the corner the fill down square, except instead of going down, I'm gonna go across. So I'm gonna pull that all the way across and you'll see that I'm able to populate a lot of my dates. Now what I wanna do next is always, always, Freeze the first row. As I told my students the first week of school, if you wanna suck up to me, like, oh, Miss Keeler, say, hey, Keeler, come over here. I made a spreadsheet, and then I come over, and I see that you've frozen the first row. <sighs> that's the way to my heart. So, okay, so that's what we're gonna do first. So I'm over here on the corner, right above the one, you'll see my hand turns into this grabby hand, and I'm going to pull it down so I can freeze the first row. And then what I'm gonna wanna do is do the same thing except with the columns. So to the left of the column indicator A, I'm gonna wanna have this grabby hand and I'm gonna pull it to the right two places so that as I scroll for attendance, I always see their name. Now what I don't wanna do is I don't wanna type in present, absent, manually each time for multiple reasons, but one is consistency that I'll probably have a typo, spell it incorrectly, and I really want them all exactly the same so that I can create a pivot table. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and call this one attendance, and then we're gonna call this other one um, present or something. And so what are the different ways that you could be present or absent in a class? Like what do you mark for attendance? So I've got present, so that one's easy, present, absent, tardy, uh, maybe we have suspended, or um, vacation, or quarantined. Field trip. Right, what a field trip. So I'm gonna put all of these reasons on here. Now I'm gonna come back over to attendance and I'm gonna highlight all of these possible places that I can take attendance. And, sure. and then I'm gonna go ahead and right click and on the right click, what I'd like to choose is under view more cell actions, data validation. So I'm gonna choose data validation and I wanna get it, my list from a range. Now you have a, a variety of ways that you can validate your data. I'm gonna use this little a box square thing and when I click on that it's gonna allow me to go over here to the present tab and I'm gonna click on column A. So you'll see that the data range that it's pulling from is the present tab column A to column A anything in column A. So what's really nice about this is I can add more things into column A later and they're gonna be options for when I go and take attendance. Okay and save. So let's go ahead and take a look. So now you notice that these all have this little drop down arrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and start marking some kids' attendance in here. It makes it really easy, because I don't have to type it, and it's gonna be exactly the same every single time. 
So now notice I'm going to come over here to present. And what's another reason a kid might be absent is they have a doctor appointment. So I'm going to come back here to attendance and notice that when I do the drop down, doctor's appointment is now an option. So again, as I update that column A under the present tab, so will all of my multiple choice drop down options. So those will be really great. All right, now we have this problem. I need more attendance. I ran out of room. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to highlight a bunch of cells. Columns, actually. Highlight all these columns. And then I'm gonna right click because I need to insert some columns to the right. I need more room. I run out of columns. I need some more columns. So I'm gonna insert some more. And so you have to highlight a bunch because I can only insert as many as I've highlighted. But you'll notice what it has done is all of my data validation is still there because the last column had the data validation already in it. So all I had to do was insert extra columns. Now of course my dates don't extend far enough. I just need to highlight two dates and come up to the corner where it has the fill down square and I'm gonna do it to the right and take it all the way over. And now you will see that I have extended my dates and they're all more data validation. Now what if I get another student? And I will get Jack Spratt. And you'll see that there is no drop down option to take attendance for Jack Spratt. Now if I had right clicked and inserted a row below, you'll see that all of those data validations would have shown up automatically. So notice that when I had come over to the very end and I right click insert a column to the right, that that new column has the data validation. That also works with the rows. So when the row that I'm clicking on has data validation and then I right click to insert, that data validation comes down. Otherwise, I can simply grab the fill down square where there is data validation and I can just pull it down and I can pull it to the right. Basically copy and paste all of that data validation if I needed to have more room. All right, Kristen, did that cover everything? Yep. 